What is the risk-free rate you use when discounting cash flows? That's the question that I've been thinking about a lot. And I decided to try to get the beginning of an answer. So I surveyed my friends in finance. I asked them that exact questions. And these people that I surveyed worked in treasury. They were analyst, fund manager, FX option trader, investment banker, M&A advisor, and just a trader as in stocks, I guess. And <clears throat> there, mainly there were analysts who answered this question. So I asked them a survey of what, do you, what is the risk-free rate that you're using when discounting cash flows? And here's the answer I got. What you can see from this is majority of them, about nearly 50%, are using a risk-free rate of 1% to 2%. There is a small number that are using 0 to 1%, 2, 2 to 3%, and 3 to 4%. And there's even someone using greater than 5% for their discount rate. Now, this also, there's nobody obviously using less than 0. But the reason why I think it's interesting is because I have had a lot of people ask me the question, how do you, how do you value a company when the risk-free rate is 0 or even negative, like the government bond rate? And I would like to try to answer that by thinking about this, first of all, in terms of remember that when we're discounting cash flows, we're discounting cash flows over the life of those cash flows. And over the life of those cash flows for a company, we're really talking about to infinity. So then it's a question of uh, how, what will interest rates look like going forward? Well, for the next six months, probably super low, maybe next year, maybe next three years. But at some point, interest rates might start to come up. Now, you could say, well, Andrew, I just, I'm just going to buy a 30-year government bond. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock that in at you know, 2%. And therefore, 2% uh, should be the risk-free rate. But remember that we tend to mark to market our portfolios of bonds. And I think we would assume that, particularly because using a model like the DCF model and CAPM, we're using a one-year return period. So it leads us into the next question is what's going to happen with interest rates? So I've created a chart here to try to look at this. So we can see majority of people are using my, uh, greater than 1 to 2. So 1, 1 1.5, 2%. I want to look at the chart of the U.S. government bond interest rate. And here we can see that we've been in a, let's say, a bull market now from 1980 until today. And that is the U.S. government. I think I use 10-year treasury for that. So um, for those people, 80, about the time that I graduated from high school, we've been in a bond market, bull market. So the question I have for those people that are saying that interest rates are down, uh, you know, and, and will be very low for to infinity, I would challenge you. I look at that chart and I think, hmm, probably can't go much lower. And I suspect the next up leg is coming soon. So tell me, what do you think? Leave a message or a comment below and then let's have a discussion.